Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be doing something that is literally six months in the making and that is we're going to be finally upgrading the GPU in the $5 Windows 98 PC. Now, this entire project started back in June of 2020 when a viewer who goes by the name Noob Ultra over on Twitter got in contact with me and said that he had a GPU that would work in the $5.98 PC that he wanted to send me. Now, I had mentioned in a couple of videos that I've been looking for a GPU for this computer. It's been one of the things I've been really wanting to upgrade in it. And uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to do so uh, was so that we can enable some of the more advanced visual effects like Windows Arrow in Windows Vista and Windows 7, which we tried to install on this computer in early 2020. I want to give a huge thanks to Noob Ultra for spending the time and the money to send this GPU out to me and for putting up with the shipping delays for so long, because that's the main reason why this thing took a while to get here. I didn't receive this package until the end of December because it came all all the way from Germany. Yes, this package actually left Germany and it got to me here in the United States. Now, Noob Ultra couldn't ship the package immediately because from what he told me, Germany had actually shut down international shipping to the United States when he initially tried to send the package. And when they opened it back up a couple of months later and he sent the package, it still took a little while to get here. I believe it was in transit for about a month. So I really have to give a huge thanks to Noob Ultra once again for just putting up with all of these problems and for uh, being so generous and, and sending this out to me. So not only did Noob Ultra send over a GPU, he sent over another Pentium 3 processor as well. Now I put one of these in the 98 PC at the beginning, sometime in the beginning of 2020, but I believe this is a different model of Pentium 3 and it certainly will come in handy for another video project. So thank you once again for including this as well, Noob Ultra. And here is the GPU in all of its glory. This is an NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 with 128 megabytes of VRAM, and I think it's going to be a perfect GPU for this computer. Now, there are drivers for Windows 98, and we are going to try those out because this machine is currently running Windows 98, but I'm going to also upgrade this machine to Windows Vista again so that we can see if this card will allow us to enable some of those more advanced visual effects like Arrow. So without any further ado, let's just get this GPU installed in the computer. I already have the machine taken apart, as you can see here. I've got the side panels off of it, rather. And we're just gonna install the GPU, put the side panels back on, and boot up the computer. Uh... Well, that's not good. Windows protection error. Yeah, this doesn't sound good at all. I can't press any key to continue. <laughs> I'm pressing a key. I can't press any key to continue. It's just beeping at me. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, it could just be a driver problem because, I mean, I just plugged the, the VGA cable into it. I mean, okay, hit F1 if you want to run the setup. I mean, it works like it can display this. Okay, so we got a startup menu. Let's try normal again. Oh, there we go. Oh, but look, is that the connection back here? No, that's not the connection oh my gosh yeah so uh this isn't really looking good guys <laughs> this is looking like a hardware issue to me so i went ahead and tried to install one of the drivers that i downloaded and the setup finished just fine but when i restarted the machine all i got was this Yes, the infamous blinking DOS prompt that isn't really a prompt as you can't do anything. The system essentially froze up. So I removed the graphics card, which made the system revert back to its integrated graphics, and it booted up just fine. Next, I tried to install the same driver, just without the card installed. My thought was, if this was a driver issue, having the driver already installed when the system boots up for the first time with the card installed would solve it. But I also expected the installer to not allow me to install the driver since it can't detect the card, which is exactly what happened. So I moved on to plan B. I had what I thought was another driver downloaded, which I tried to install, but it turned out to be just a compressed version of the same driver. And obviously the installer did the same thing. So next up was installing the driver manually through the add new hardware wizard. Selecting have disk and browsing to the INF file on the CD brought up a list of cards that it contained drivers for, so I chose the one that I have. It copied the files and asked me to restart. I chose no and shut down the machine instead so I could put the graphics card back in the computer. 
And that seemed to work, the screen didn't have those lines running down it anymore. That is, until I got to the login screen where they reappeared. Great. A message box came up asking me to restart one more time, so I did that, and this is what I saw next. Yeah, this is definitely pointing towards a hardware issue. What's even worse is I got the same blinking DOS prompt that isn't really a prompt, as the system locked up once again. And I can confirm that the entire system froze as opposed to the display just not working properly, because if it was just an issue with the connection or something like that, the machine would still be able to boot up to the login screen and play the login sound when I pressed enter. So I waited a while on this screen and tried this, but nothing happened. There was also no hard drive activity, another indicator that the machine froze up. So I once again removed the graphics card from the machine, and we were back to square one. My next plan was to try the FX5200 Ultra driver instead of the one for the regular model, on the off chance that this card was in fact the Ultra variant, which I honestly didn't think it was. It finished installing, so I shut down the machine and put the card back in, and this actually seemed to solve things. Booting the system up resulted in no lines on the screen, even on the login screen. And since the driver installed, the screen resolution and color mode improved significantly. I pressed enter to log in, Windows configured the display driver, and we were at the desktop with the setup wizard for NVIDIA's NVIEW. Wonderful! This seemed to fix everything. But unfortunately, it didn't last long. As soon as I moved the window around, the lines reappeared, and then the entire system locked up. I had no choice but to force power off the system. And you know what I saw when I turned it back on? That's right, more display issues. It looked like the system tried to load the boot screen before locking up once more. So I removed the card for one final time and came to the conclusion that it must have gotten damaged in shipping. In fact, looking back at the first part of this video, I noticed that the bottom part of the card's bracket was bent inwards, and it wasn't like this in the photo Noob Ultra sent me. I don't think that this alone would cause the card to function in this way, but since the bend was so close to the VGA port, I thought maybe the DVI port would give us better results. So I tried, and no. We still got the same issues, except with the cool red and black screen now. And honestly, that was going to be the end of this video. But after messaging Noob Ultra, I found out that this card was actually overclocked. He suggested reverting the clock speed back to its factory default, which would require modifying the card's BIOS and reflashing it. It's worth a shot. So, let's do it. Alright, welcome back everybody. So we're here on the 98 PC, I've got the GPU installed in the computer once again, and I've got this monitor connected to that GPU through the DVI port using a DVI to VGA adapter. Now hopefully we'll be able to boot back into safe mode because we have to boot off of an MS-DOS boot disk or a Windows 98 boot disk. So what we're going to be doing is resetting the VRAM clock speed back to its default 133 megahertz because the person who sent this to me had overclocked it, which could be causing these issues, I'm not sure, but he suggested doing this and seeing if these issues still persist. So, we're going to restart the computer here. So it should boot off of the floppy disk automatically for us. And this is a standard Windows 98 boot disk. Okay, so at this menu we're going to select option 3 to quit out a setup and just bring us to a DOS prompt. And I'm going to swap floppy disks here. So we got these two files on here, we're going to run dump BIOS first and this will dump the card's BIOS so we can modify it. So it just did that. Now if we do a directory listing once again, you see we've got BIOS.bin, that's the, the file that it created. So now we got to boot back into Windows 98. So I'm going to eject the floppy disk here. We're going to press Control Delete, and we're going to try to boot into safe mode again because that was able to work fine last time. You can see we're currently not getting any of those display issues, but when I try to actually we'll just let it boot into Windows 98 normally because I'm sure we're going to get those issues once again. Honestly, if it boots into Windows 98, but we just have the lines running down the screen again, that'll be fine because we just have to run a, a program from within Windows 98. So you can see now the yeah, I think this is where yeah, it just literally restarted. <laughs> so that's not good. It might be stuck in it. Now, this never happened before. So it might come up. Let's just try normal once again. If this fails, we'll just boot back into safe mode because that, that worked. Now, I can hear the hard drive. I think it just re... Yep, it just restarted again. I can tell because the monitor went off. Okay, so we're just going to boot into safe mode. So what we have to do now is I'm going to put in another floppy disk here. And this one has two different tools that we could use to modify... The BIOS. Oh, actually, first I need to copy this BIOS over to the hard disk. So 
So we'll just do that here. We'll refresh. Yeah, this one had, these are, this is still showing the contents of this here. I copied the tools on that other disc along with some other stuff, but I just made a separate one because I didn't think the, uh, I mean, it, this one was very close to the, to its max capacity of 1.44 megabytes. So I just decided to use a different, this is not refreshing for some reason. I don't know what's going on. I, I just decided to use a separate disc. What, what is, this is not, there should be a dot. This is not the right one. What? Did I, did I mess these up or something? Like, for some reason, it's not like recognizing that I've put a new disc in the drive. It's still like I go here. Well, there should be bios.bin. I mean, it should be on here. I think it was .bin. Cannot find. I'm, I'm very, I'm very confused here. I'm going to put in the Windows 98 disc and we'll refresh. Okay, and that changes. So what's the deal? Like, these are not the same disc. Okay, where on earth did it save this to? Like, you guys saw I literally just ran the dump BIOS command. It copied the BIOS, and when I did dir slash w, it showed that new file on the disc. Now all of a sudden it's gone. dir slash w. <laughs> okay, I am, this is the disc I just used. What the heck is going on? Okay, this is the other one that I specifically wrote on. Okay, somehow I've got like two copies of this disc now. Like literally, I have no idea how that happened. These are two separate discs. You see the volume serial number? They're two separate discs and they have the same content. So what we're gonna do is just free up some space here. So we're gonna delete this. So we just have dump BIOS and NV flash along with the system volume information. Great. So we're gonna close out of this and we're gonna restart again. Uh, don't really know why that happened. Okay, well I put in the other disc with all the other files on it and I was able to run dump BIOS and there's our BIOS.bin. And you can see we are, we're like one point two something megabytes so we're pretty close to the 1.44 megabytes which is why that i did this in the first place it made two separate discs with just nv flash and dump bios because these are the two tools we have to use when we're booted off of the windows 98 boot disk this is the nvidia bios editor tool and this here is another tool we can use to edit the bios i've got both of them on here just so if one of them doesn't work we have a backup option so now I'm going to leave this disk in the drive, we're going to press Control delete to restart, and if that BIOS file vanishes again, I have no idea how to explain that. But we're going to boot into safe mode. There we go, BIOS.bin, isn't that beautiful? Okay, so now I'm going to copy this over to the desktop here, or just over to the hard drive, so that we aren't running it off of the floppy disk. And this is version 5.2 of the NVIDIA BIOS editor, or Nibiter, Nibitor, something like that. We're gonna run it here, extract, actually let's make a new folder called NV BIOS, and that's extracted. So we're going to open this up, here it is. Here's the program. Well, we can open the BIOS, so let's go to the A drive, go to my computer, A, and it created a bin file. Oh, here we go, we can select the bin, okay. BIOS.bin open. And according to Noob Ultra, we just have to change the memory from 150 to 133, and that brings the speed down to 266 megahertz. So we're going to, I believe it is save BIOS, and that will save this to yeah, I can hear the uh, floppy disk. So we are going to call this BIOS mod, even though it's not really a mod, dot bin. So we'll save that. And that should save the modified BIOS file saved. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna close out of this. Just to verify, we go to our floppy disk drive and you can see we got BIOS mod dot bin right here. So if we do a directory listing, we've got NV flash, which is the tool we're going to use. We run that slash F and then we specify the name of the new BIOS, which is biosmod.bin. Enter. Load error. I wonder if there were more files I didn't copy over. Hang on one second. All right, we're back with a new version of NV Flash that hopefully won't be. I mean, I don't know if this is corrupted or what, but it's not supposed to do this. So we're going to just run 
a directory listing once again. And this had two files. It has NV flash right here and then CWSD PMI. So we're just going to run NV flash running slash question mark should display a list of commands. And this is a newer version, by the way, this is version five point something. I believe the other version was 0.4. Yes. Okay. There we go. So according to the guide, I found the command we need to run is NV flash slash F and then the name of the BIOS, which is BIOS mod dot bin. And then this should, should is the key word. Well, that just ran the, this again, is there even a slash F? I see, I wonder if this new version, uh, there is not one. Well, there's a capital F, which you'd use slash capital F, but that's an image to use from a firmware bundle. I don't know, I think we, let's just press Q here. I think we could just run NV flash and then BIOS mod dot bin. Firmware image file name must have a star.rom or star.nvr extension. Okay, so this was not in the guide that I found. Of course, that probably pertains to version four, but in theory, we should be able to fix this. Let's restart back into Windows 98 and we're going to save it as a .rom. So we'll just call this new bios.rom save. Okay, great news. So we'll close out of Nibiter and we're going to shut down restart. Okay, so you see we have all the files here. We've got our new bios.rom. So we're gonna run nv flash I just want to look at this options menu again because like I want to make sure there's nothing that I have to add. It looks like we can just run nv flash new bios.rom because you see, yeah, update firmware. This options thing here is where you would put slash whatever. From what I can see here, check for supported EEPROM, write protect EEPROM. Nothing really that applies to us. Continue. List all NVIDIA display adapters, allow firmware. Uh, ID mismatch, Don't certainly don't want that. Keep the soft straps already present in the EEPROM. Um, index, for specific index, index of which firmware image to use. I really don't see anything that like says you have to specify the model of the card because obviously that information is contained in the BIOS file itself. So we're just gonna quit and run nv flash new BIOS.rom. Okay. NVIDIA firmware update utility. So there's our current version and it's going to replace it with, I mean, it's the same version, but we've just modified the clock speed. But this is the correct card, GeForce FX 5200. Y to confirm. The display may go blank on and off for up to 10 seconds or more. So here it goes. Storing updated firmware image, verifying update, update successful. Okay, I guess that's it. Let's just restart, guys. Let's see if this works. This is the moment of truth. So we're just gonna try to run Windows 98 normally. Now, oh, that doesn't sound good. That's a postcode. Oh boy, I think we just made this worse. That's a postcode that probably relates to a display issue, that there's there's no display adapter. I'm, I'm guessing that's what that, I could probably look it up here. So I don't know which BIOS this is. I think this is Award. I don't know if this is AMI or Award. Award BIOS, which, yeah, see, it is reading one long and two short, which I think is what it's doing. Yep. Indicates a video error has occurred and the BIOS cannot initialize the video screen to display any additional information. I think we just bricked the card, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so obviously I did something wrong there. I honestly have not flashed a video card BIOS before. This was my first time doing it and it certainly did not work. Assuming this is, my guess is this is, I, I never actually looked at the BIOS manufacturer, but I'm guessing that this is award because the one long two short beep code corresponds to video error, which is likely what this is. Now there's one for one long three short, which is when a video card isn't detected, which is not the case here because there is a video card obviously in the computer. So this literally corresponds to the video card that there's, there's some sort of video error that it can't obviously display what it is because there's a video problem. And there it goes again. So it probably just tried to reset itself there. This is something I'm going to have to revisit, assuming we can resurrect this thing. I'm sure a lot of people in the comments will be pointing out uh, something that I did wrong that I just didn't realize. I don't know, but 
Uh, we possibly will be revisiting this in a future video, but this is certainly, this is an even worse conclusion than what we had originally, which was just, oh, there's lines running down the screen and the card doesn't work and it's a hardware issue. Well, that's really all I can do for now. Uh, we may revisit this card in a future video if it's even possible to resurrect this thing somehow, but for now, I'm going to have to sign off, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode for what it was. If you did, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed down below. And turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. Huge thank you once again to Noob Ultra for your donation and for your CPU donation as well. That hopefully will make it into a future video at some point. And as always, I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.